Hey everybody, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com and the URC forums. And in this video, I'm just going to be covering my final thoughts on the Vetera Twin Hammers. This vehicle here, I uh, don't quite know exactly what type of vehicle to call it, a rock buggy, rock racer type of thing. Don't know the proper classification for these vehicles, but uh, I'm just going to start from the end. Do I like the vehicle? Yes. Do I feel like my money was well spent? Eh, it's pretty, pretty decent. I do feel like I might have done better for particular situations with some other vehicles, but I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later on. I'll compare it to some individual ones. Uh, for now, what did I like about this vehicle? Well, first off, I love the looks of it. Uh, it just, everything about the appearance of the roll cage, little fake driver, which is good enough detail wise. Uh, the tires look good, an actual real spare wheel and tire on the back. Uh, it's just, it's just a good looking vehicle. You know, it's kind of scale-ish. It just, it looks right for what it's trying to be. Next thing is that this is a hybrid suspension setup. It has independent suspension in the front. And it has solid axle in the rear. Hello, hello. Wow. Yeah, see, that's pretty crazy. That articulation that this thing gets, I mean, it sits moderately low, you know, it's just a little bit higher up than a full independent suspension vehicle, but you can get so much travel out of it. So much travel. That's just crazy. And the articulation for what it is, man, pretty sick, really. Look at that. Most of the articulation is from the back, though. The front's pretty uh, pretty stiff. It was actually much stiffer than this until I uh, backed off the uh, preload a little bit versus stock. Next thing that I like about this, speed. Now, this is, this is a little bit tricky, and this is a little bit uh, unexpected. And I know that there are plenty of folks out there who think that anything that, that isn't 6S compatible, it doesn't have a Mamba monster that doesn't go at least 60 miles per hour is slow and junk and just not worth even looking at, not worth existing on the planet. Well, I happen to disagree with that opinion. I think that speed is a relative thing. And this vehicle being something with a solid axle on it, especially when I compare it to other things that have called themselves rock racers in the past, this thing went uh, about 17, a little over 17, almost 18 miles per hour on dirt, stock, brushed motor setup for what it is. That was really fast. I was genuinely surprised by how quick it went. Not only that, but it could actually turn at those speeds on, on dirt. Maybe not on, on hot asphalt or some super grippy surface, but on, on dirt, it, it, was, it was composed. And it felt really fun. Like it felt, it felt like a lively vehicle, you know, driving it around. Uh, it felt much faster than it should be. It felt faster than it needed to be for the style of vehicle that it is. It can actually jump. It can get up in the air. We can land and not bounce itself into a million pieces and not, you know, flop all over the place. It actually handles pretty nicely. Uh, practically box stock. Like I said, only just changing the the preload settings just a little bit. These tires have a very nice tread. It's actually a very useful tread and they're they're just they're good looking. However, there's a little bit of a issue as far as grip is concerned on the rocks and such with the inserts. So the 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 rubber compound it's good. For RTR, it's good. The inserts are stiff though, especially the, the corners. I think some of this problem might actually be from the from the tires themselves. Uh, the sidewalls feel like they might be a little bit stiff in the corners up here, but that really does limit the slow speed crawling capabilities of, of the vehicle. I'll get to that in just a second, but it's actually really good for the speed that it goes because uh, I did test this thing with better tires on it. I put the stock tires from a, a uh, SCX-10 on here, uh, Axial SCX-10. Uh, kit, dingo kit actually it was, and got much better traction over the rocks, but uh, as soon as I tried to 
go normal speed on just flat dirt ground in the same place I had driven this before and then turn. Flip, 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 everywhere. So there's definitely a little bit of uh, give and take there with the, the choice of tires and how much grip that you want to get out of them. You can put sway bars on this thing and that will uh, both front and rear. Probably want to put them on the rear more than the front. The front's stiff enough, but the rear has just so much articulation. It's a good place. You know, when it's, when it's at speed, it tends to do this in turns. So that's, that's something that you could, that you could definitely improve upon with the sway bar and that will actually allow you to run softer tires Maybe not as soft as the, the Axial ones that I ran, but uh, there, there is room for improvement there. But in, in stock form, if you want to go fast, you want to stick with something like this or not too much better than that. If you want to go slow, then I definitely do recommend that you go with something softer and more pliable and preferably something weighted in the front. Because in stock form, this thing does not crawl well. It really doesn't. It does not, does not act like a crawler. It, it doesn't like rocks bigger than maybe you can go up to about the height height of a tire, but that's about it. It just doesn't have the grip. Uh, but more importantly, it has a front differential. Now I have changed that a little bit. In stock form, it's completely open. It just has grease in there. I put 500,000 weight silicone oil in my diff. It wasn't too hard, by the way, to get into the diff. Filled up that, that diff with uh, 500,000 weight and now it's much, much stiffer. It still drives just fine uh, on flat ground at speed and in turns. However, it's dramatically better over rocks where it's able to actually pull itself over things. I would call that a must do. It's just gonna make it better, period. If you wanna go do a lot of fast driving, consider getting a rear sway bar set for it. And uh, also consider taking off the the rear spare tire, it, it looks great, but it is something that uh, it puts a lot of weight up high and really holds back your, your handling capabilities. If you want to go slow, you want to go over rocks, uh, then you probably do want to put on some better tires. I, I do highly recommend that. And again, take off the, <laughs> the rear, uh, the, the spare tire, because that's again not going to help you at all when you get into situations where you're side hilling or if you get to a, you know if you're going very very high up and just in general it it's it's in a bad place that's not going to help you ever uh, if you're going to go slow it's also good to get some weight on the front end you can do that through weighted front wheels things that i really really don't like about this vehicle there's only one and that is the difficulty of getting inside there. There's no hatch. There's no easy access method. You need to take off hella screws. I'll just leave it at that. Hella screws. Yeah, I'm bringing back hella. It's either 16 or 18, something in the mid to high teens. It's, it's a lot of screws. They have many different sizes. They have uh, different heads. It's a pain in the butt. Another thing I didn't like too much was the use of a very small battery. You can see this is like a 1 18th scale size battery. It is included. Uh, there are other batteries available in that size, but you're not gonna put a full on 1 10th scale standard big old battery in there, which is gonna be about, you know, about yay big. Now crawler guys are used to using smaller size batteries. So for most of them, that's not gonna be an issue, but for just regular bashers, just regular folks who are used to faster independent suspension vehicles, normal RTRs and such, that's definitely something you're gonna have to look out for. I think that, that pretty much covers the overall features and overall thoughts on the vehicle. I need to compare this though to what else is on the market to, to get back to my, in my earlier comment about the value being uh, questionable. This costs 400 bucks ready to run. Now it does come with a, uh, a lipo battery the shocks are aluminum all bearings all the way around it does come with a pretty decent radio it feels feels good has endpoint adjustments and uh, it's actually a, a, a three channel radio oh i'll go ahead and mention that why is it three channel it's a two speed it has a a manual transmission in it, it gives you uh, double range kind of works like the old Emacs where you have one low low or the current summit and whatnot you have a low low and then you have just a normal normal driving you know faster driving 
range. And that works really well. Coming back to, to value on this thing, has some nice stuff, but at 400 bucks, that is pretty high. What can I compare this to? Well, Axial, SEX, SEX10. Their most recent Jeep version of the uh, SEX10, you know, their, their scaler, their 1.9 inch scaler truck, it's 380 bucks ready to run. I, I would put this one pretty much on par with that actually, in terms of value. It's a different vehicle though. It's a very different vehicle. The SEX10 is a full solid axle vehicle with a steel frame, I guess ladder frame. You can change that into a 2.2 inch rig with big old tires, lift the body way up, make it look all like a monster truck, and then you can get it to crawl much better by virtue of having locked diffs or not having diffs at all, and just locked uh, axles front and rear and having big tires. However, if you keep the two of them both on 1.9 inch tires with the stock tires, I think that the, the Axial comes with the better tires for sure, but you're never gonna get the speed out of it that you can with this. I've never seen an SEX10 that can handle as well, uh, no matter how well set up and customized and modified and increased in, in price. I've never seen one that'll handle similar speeds to this uh, anywhere near as well as this does. So different, you know? Feel like it's similar value, but they're different. However, the Jeep one is the most expensive of the SEX10s. You go down to the Honcho RTR, which has been on the market longer and it's not a licensed uh, body and all that, that's 350 bucks. So for just driving slowly and doing trail runs, uh, you, you spend a lot less there. However, I've had a, I've actually had the, the short wheelbase, uh, the Dingo. If you set this thing up, guarantee you're gonna be able to, to crawl better with this than with an SCX10 on 1.9 inch tires. Compare using the same tires or using appropriate tires for each, both aftermarket setting up the suspension appropriately, not for maximum articulation, but for correct balance. Somebody who knows what they're doing will be able to make this thing outcrawl and SCX10 any day. Uh, it, it, this is a better platform for slow speed driving on 1.9s. Now, something that is a, a better platform than this by far is the Wraith, the Axial Wraith, right? Another full roll cage, scale-ish looking vehicle, but that one's on 2.2s stock. Again, full uh, solid axles, front and rear, uses lockers, not diffs. Way better than this for crawling. Again, by virtue of using larger, larger tires stock. It's also a much larger vehicle. It's a significantly larger vehicle than this. Uh, does not go nearly as fast as this. If you wanna go fast with a Wraith, you will need to spend some dough I think the Wraith still tops out at about 10, 11 miles per hour stock compared to this one that's up in the 18 range. It's a dramatic difference. The Wraith also, also does not handle jumps half as well as this, a third as well as this. You have to do some serious setup work on the Wraith for that. The Wraith is 400 bucks. Same price, different things. I think the Wraith for most folks who are interested in in uh, slow driving are gonna get more value out of, out of the Wraith for the same price. Now, here's the big kicker. Again, from Axial, because they're the, they're the popular company that, that has most of the vehicles that this is going to uh, compete against. The Ridgecrest, the Axial Ridgecrest. A lot of folks don't like the stock body on the Ridgecrest. However, check out my review of the Ridgecrest. Check out my stock driving videos of the Ridgecrest. It drives over slow stuff way better than the, the Wraith. Fundamentally has some, some serious advantages over the Wraith. It's a little bit smaller vehicle, shorter wheelbase, but still runs 2.2 inch wheels and tires. And it's going after a similar market to this, but the Ridgecrest is 310 bucks RTR. There, I think you end up with a much better, much, much, much better deal unless you wanna go super fast. But even if you do wanna go su super fast for this type of vehicle, you know, for a scale type of vehicle, if you wanna go into the 20 plus uh, mile per hour range, uh, you should be able to get yourself a, a moderately cheap Leopard or Hobby Wing or, or off-brand off G-Force or something uh, motor setup that'll get you more, more speed still keep you in the same overall price range as this was stock. One last vehicle I'm gonna compare this to, one that a lot of folks have asked about uh, comparing this to, doesn't make too much sense to me. And that's the Axial XO, 
the comparison doesn't make sense to me. It, they look like similar vehicles if you look just there, right? Yeah, you, that, that looks like it could be a competitive thing, like it's in the same class. But when you consider everything about this, when you consider that this is a solid axle vehicle that's closer to a scaler, it's closer to a crawler, then there's no comparison. The, the XO is 350 bucks, okay? Uh, with the for the ready to run version it goes way faster than this full independent suspension it's not a trail driving vehicle it will never be a crawler it's a flat it's basically a short course truck platform or a large 10th scale buggy platform four-wheel drive with a flat aluminum chassis and they just stuck on a a nice looking roll cage a completely different thing if you want to go fast XO will beat this hands down all day, every day for the rest of eternity. If you want to go slow, if you want to go over rocks, this thing will eat a eat an XO alive, especially if you put just new tires on it. So completely different vehicles, really not vehicles that I think should be compared at all, but they are two that a lot of people have asked about. So for the majority of folks out there who just want to pin throttle and see something go by in a straight line on fairly flat ground really quickly the XO is far better and there are other things that'll do the same thing uh, cheaper than that uh, but for folks who want to do exactly what this is designed to do trail driving a little bit of crawling uh, this is just about as good as anything on the market right now or 1.9 inch tire tire size so it's basically it's competing in a very small niche a tiny niche there isn't anything else that that is just like this out there and that 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 kind of gives it a little bit of exclusivity in its space it takes away some of its competition really uh, for folks who really look at this carefully for folks who are not looking for that specific thing but are looking for similar types of, of vehicles that do similar things and mostly that have that nice scale look it opens up your options quite a bit and uh, like i say if you want to if you want to go on the rocks look for something with bigger tires with 2.2 inch to begin with if you want to go fast don't look for a solid axle vehicle for what it is i think the the value is decent i think that it, it does come with good stuff i think it it does its job it does what it's intended to do very well it's just a little bit on the expensive side but i'm still happy with it and i'm sure there are plenty of folks out there who will be happy with it as long as you know what it is as long as you don't expect it to do things that it is not designed uh, to do so that's it. That's it for, for my thoughts on this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see, again, just plain driving videos, I've got a handful of those up. that will show you exactly how this thing behaves. I haven't done anything to the suspension. I did change out the tires uh, on one of the videos. Uh, the others are running still with the, with the stock stuff. And other folks have driving videos up too. Be sure to look for ones that are, uh, that are showing the vehicle with a list of what upgrades or lack thereof are included and you know, there's definitely good information out there and i hope that all of this helps you out so that's it for now thanks again for watching if you have any questions or comments about anything rc related be sure to stop by the urc forums at ultimatercom slash forums and there are thousands of folks with thousands of times more experience than me in total who can help you out so i look forward to hearing from you soon and i'll talk to you again soon in my next video